China has been developing in the last 10 years, let's say, a really strong relationship with Argentina. China currently imports a lot of natural resources from Argentina. It's actually a really large amount of our exports and they receive a lot of natural resources from Argentina. And there is, it should be really important that in that cooperation, into environmental integrity gets much more stringent. Mm -hmm. Renewables lately have been entering this mix in a way without precedent. Um, this, this new government that we have for already two years now uh, has been really active in the way that we have seen a really big number of Chinese companies trying to get uh, projects for renewables. China has massive amounts of investment related to nuclear power and to big hydro as well. Uh, sometimes those projects are a bit concerning, uh, especially with the environmental standards that we have in Argentina. There are things, there are a lot of challenges to overcome to make sure that those investments actually flow in the right direction for the transition. China should respect all the, the national regulations in terms of, in terms of environmental protection. Uh, the Argentinian government must also be more stringent with the rules uh, that are for this investment. And, and of course, it should be the same for everyone. The big hydro projects that we have, which is creating a lot of defensive reactions from, from civil society and from the people, uh, because the project is actually jeopardizing one of our biggest uh, and, and most unnatural uh, glaciers. In Asia, there is a huge coal buildup. Around 80% of the coal expansion globally is in Asia. We thought that China could actually really play a major role in terms of investing into renewables. Two coal plants in the Philippines is being eyed by Chinese companies. Uh, one in, in, in the south of uh, the Philippines in, in Mindanao uh, and another one in uh, the north. China is one of the leaders in terms of renewable energy uh, development and mobilization for uh, you know displacing uh, dirty energy and more cheaper electricity, we thought that China could actually play a uh, you know, positive role to the development of renewable energy-based electricity in the Philippines. So many studies that have shown that China doing other sources of energy, uh, mainly coal in Vietnam, in um, Indonesia, and even Myanmar. So, so we're quite cautious about it. And we thought that you know China could could actually really play a, a major positive role, and because of the experience of China having you know uh, all this uh, wonderful and positive uh, steps towards addressing climate change, addressing pollution inside China, we thought that that experience should be uh, shared amongst uh, the Southeast Asian countries. Zambia is a mining country. So basically all the economic activities uh, or Zambian economy is uh, driven by the mining. And mining in terms of energy, they consume a lot of uh, uh, energy. We are trying by all means to be as, uh, you know, a green economy as possible by uh, utilizing the renewable technologies. Chinese government have been very helpful in terms of you know building capacity for our uh, local people. Of course, uh, energy, uh, I mean energy technology uh, transfer as well. They are doing a lot, uh, and in terms of training our people, so many officers in the energy sector, be it from the government side, from the utility that is a power generating company, from the regulator, so many officers they are trained. 
they go to you know China for short course uh, training, and that is building capacity. They are getting trained in all the renewable technologies. They are getting trained in solar. They are getting trained in the uh, mini hydros. When you talk of the Belt Road Initiative, which uh, principally it just talks about you know the connectivity uh, between states. You talk of Asia, Africa, Europe. I think it's a very good initiative. And we, as Zambia, in the energy sector, we are likely to benefit. There was time where we couldn't fill up the dams. So in any case now, in terms of power generation, it went, we were actually almost by half, below half. So now, it was a challenge for us to come up with the energy. So that was all because of the, the climate change. Faced the severe flooding, we faced the droughts, and the recently we faced the problem of the smoke. And uh, last two years we had the issue of the heat wave. And these are the some of the new climate change effects. I mean, the previously in the history we never faced such kind of the things. We are working on the China-Pakistan economic corridor under which we it's opening the great opportunities for Pakistan in terms of the economic. Uh, development and uh, we were having the severe shortfall of the energy in Pakistan. Pakistan is a country who is among the top 10 countries most affected by the climate change and our contribution in the global carbon emission is very less and on the other hand we are having the severe energy shortfalls. We are working on the renewable energy projects that includes the solar power projects. There are some hydropower projects that are uh, building, uh, we are building to come over these crises. Then there are some uh, wind power projects as well. The China Pakistan Economic Corridor is opening the great opportunities not for the countries but for the people of the country. It will be open the great doors for the people of Pakistan in terms of the employment, in terms of the economic benefits. So I believe we are doing good. <laughs> To actually shift away from investing on coal, not just in the Philippines for China, but you know the rest of Asia, particularly those in Pakistan, in Central Asia, and in 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 Southeast Asia is is of utmost urgency. So climate change is real. It's something that needs uh, you know concerted effort by everybody, so that you know we don't uh, find ourselves in the, the same negative issues with regard to any generation in the life. Climate change is the thing that is directly affecting the people. So this is the thing, it's not about the government, that I think it's the individual responsibility, it's the international responsibility, it's a national responsibility.